What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about the proxy pattern. And whenever you think of proxy, if you've worked any, you know, if you've worked any length in the IT industry, you probably think of like an internet proxy or a web proxy. Proxy kind of has like hacker connotations. And a proxy exists in, in many forms in IT. Like I said, the internet proxy, you think about you, whenever you're at work and you're trying to surf the internet, your work actually has a proxy. And what's going to happen is that there's a router and before you, even, and this is the cloud. So even before, and this is a computer, so your internet's going out, there's a router here and a proxy is filtering out the internet. So all of your internet is being flowed through almost like a, a pipe and the proxy is looking at it before it goes out to the internet and before you can reach Facebook, the proxy is going to block it and make sure that your computer cannot actually go out to the internet. Um, you also think about proxies, almost like a proxy war. You think about proxies uh, in terms of that, like nowadays a lot of wars aren't fought on front lines, they're fought in ways that are not, you know, you're not physically seeing the person. There's a, there's a window, there's a proxy, you know, okay, you, you get the picture. But in software development, the proxy is going to be sort of the same concept. You have a class here and it's not, the proxy in computer programming is not going to be any type of device or some type of abstract concept. It's literally just another class and we have a client and in most of these examples, you're going to notice that the program CS is actually the client. In some of the cases, it's not. But in this case, the client is going to actually be the program CS. And we have a super secret database class. Or we have just some type of class where we don't want people to be interacting with it directly. It's almost like a proxy where you're not interacting directly. You are, you know, by proxy, you are somehow interacting with this. But our class is going to be... Uh, the like the middleman in between and i'll show you uh exactly what i mean here so we'll just go ahead gonna go ahead and get rid of this and we're gonna do like we always do open up another folder and we'll call this the proxy so proxy and first things first we want to make a couple fake like some type of fake class and this type uh i you could go with like another network utility you know another fake network utility but i'm actually going to call this one super secret d database and our super secret database is it's a secret we don't want people to be interacting with it and with the proxy pattern it doesn't it doesn't have to be secret it doesn't have to be some kind of you know super secret thing but just because we're talking about hackers and proxy wars. We're just gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and make it a super secret. So we're gonna go here, go down. We're gonna go database name. And this, because we don't want people to maybe interact with our database and we don't want people to know our database's name because that prevents some type of hypothetical security risk, we're going to design this actual super secret uh, database proxy. So we're gonna go here, super secret database, and we're gonna create a structor. And within this constructor, we're going to initialize the database name. And we go down here, and you guys, if you've been programming long enough, you kinda, you probably know where I'm going with this. We're just gonna create another structure. And then under here, we have this, once again, this method that we don't, we don't want people to interact with this method directly. We want people to authenticate before they can see the display database name. So we go down here and we're gonna go display uh, database name. Yeah, just display database name and then go down here and we'll go database name and we don't want people who don't have any type of authentication to be able to display this database name. And also we're gonna to need to create an interface and we'll just go ahead and toss in like a nice little interface right here. So we go here, we're gonna go interface and I super secret database. Awesome. 
Then because we have this method in here, we're gonna go ahead and go down here and we're gonna to toss it into our interface. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's start talking about our proxy. So we're gonna go create, let's just say super, super secret proxy, uh, super secret database proxy. Okay, and then here, as usual, we're gonna bring it, we're actually gonna bring this in up top and we're gonna do dependency injection. Okay, so soup got super secret database. Then we're gonna go down here and remember that I want to make a database proxy that's going to make it so that I have to authenticate in order to actually be able to access this database. And when we do that, I'll show, you, I'll show you what I mean here. So we're gonna go here. So we're gonna go database name and we want to initialize with the database name because we need to actually have like authentication. Then we're gonna go down here. We're gonna go password. We have all those. Trying to, oh, this is an interface for some reason. We actually need this to be a class. Then we're gonna go down here. And when we initialize this database proxy, we're gonna go database name and we're gonna go string password. Then we're gonna control dot and initialize these fields. Initialize field password. And after we get done initializing this super secret class, what's gonna happen is it's gonna, of course, it's gonna store those variables up here so let's see, yep, it's already, let me make sure that these database name and that should, okay, good. So that is correct. I was gonna, I was trying to make sure that those names were displayed correctly. Then we go down here and when we want to display, let's just say that we want to authenticate to the database or we want to display the database name, but we want to make sure, like I said, that they're inputting the right password or they're inputting the right actual name. Or in this case, we're just doing the password. So display database name. We just want it to display. It. And this could be anything. You could also put authentic login to database. That, uh, so whenever we log into this or whenever this user is in initializing this or newing up this class, they actually have to do something with it or they have to actually authenticate. And remember, we're doing this in the context of programming as well too. If we were doing this to authenticate to an actual web frame or like on the login for an actual website, we would be doing this totally different. But because we're in the context of software development, this is the reason we're using a database proxy. Also keep that in mind. You wouldn't, you don't want to design a database proxy to, you know, <laughs> actually log into an actual website. That, that would make no sense. Okay, so let me see here. All right, so our super secret database. So if the super secret database is null, so if we haven't nude this up yet, and this is almost functioning like a singleton. Like if you watch my super, uh, my singleton video, this is actually like almost like a singleton, but it's just got a little bit more functionality to it. So if that helps you remember it, think of it like that. So we're going here. And then we go down here, then we're gonna have our super secret database. And if everything logs in correctly, we can actually, we'll be, we'll be able to actually log in or display the database name for our super secret database. And that's kind of like the whole, that's pretty much the whole idea, but let's go ahead and let's test it out. So go down here, go in, I, data, I super secret database, I super secret is equal to new and because super secret and because it's a uh, interface and we are in like our database proxy is actually in a implementation of our super secret database we can use the i super secret database for the database proxy so we're gonna go secret database proxy
So let's go in here. And we need to initialize it with, let me see, test DB. We're just gonna call it test DB. And then we're gonna go in here and then we're gonna call it password. And we also, let me see. And I'm gonna just copy this because I think I spelled it wrong and it's not auto-correcting it. And nullability of reference types does not match. And let me see, we've got an error here. Nullability of reference types. It is used to, oh, okay. I actually need to initialize this. Call this database. Nullability of reference types. I think I have some type of, I've got some kind of strange error in here. I'm going to try and fix it, but I might not be able to. I hope I can. Nullability of reference types. Oh, okay. So if that is equal to null, it said if it's not null. So that was not the correct logic. And somehow it picked up on that. Cannot complete from super secret database proxy. And I've got one, I've got another error. Okay, so. And this is an implementation of the I super I, I made this exact exact same error in the last video. Okay. Cannot convert type. Huh. Still giving me the same error. Cannot convert type. Two references. Oh, it's actually not a type of that. Need to be more careful about bringing in my interfaces. Okay, great. So looks like we got it working and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna database display name. Let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and run this thing. So go down and let me go ahead and check the output. see here huh okay if I have any more errors then I'm gonna have to go back and remake this but I really don't want to so let's go down here so we're gonna go down here it's equal to password oh I had the wrong password this is supposed to be password okay and display database name test db our database proxy has worked anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching